morning, my dear friends and family in Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let's try that again for the people on Zoom. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we have the lessons. The first lesson is from 2 Samuel. The king, David, ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter was there was great on that day. 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth while the mule that was under him went on. And 10 young men, Joab's armor bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came and the Cushite said, good tidings for my Lord, the King, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The King said to the Cushite, is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, 
May the enemies of my Lord, the King, and all who rise up to you do rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I have died instead of you, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 130, found in your service leaflet on page five or in the Book of Common Prayer on page 784. We will read it responsibly, breaking at the verse. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading this morning is from Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give to the life of the world is my flesh. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. If you saw the email that I sent out this morning with the Zoom links and the service booklets, I put in a note of caution um, because this morning I'm gonna be talking about the rape of Tamar. And I know that for many that can be a sensitive and painful subject. So I just wanted to let you all know and um, welcome and ask that you take care of yourselves in any way that you need to, if this is too painful a topic. So I'm not sure how many of you watched HBO's Game of Thrones, but if you didn't watch it, you've probably heard about it. It was a cultural phenomenon for all the seasons that it was on. It was an epic tale of machinations to hold on to or take the throne, the power over a fictitious country. It was a story that had everything you could ask for. Bloodshed, betrayal, poisoning, magic, dragons, and perhaps the most pernicious of all, incest between a brother and sister. Now, not to question the talent of the author of the novels upon which the show is based, because there's certainly no way my imagination could have come up with all of that. No, I don't want to call into question the author George R.R. R. Martin's talent, but I would claim that the original idea of a Game of Thrones goes to the authors of the books of Samuel and of Kings. It is the story of King David. Said a few weeks back that some scholars have said that David must have existed because no one would create a figure so flawed to be the founder of a nation. This morning we heard an episode that has its beginnings in one of David's greatest flaws. The events in this morning's Old Testament reading have their genesis in events that we heard in the readings from 2 Samuel a few weeks ago. David sees the woman Bathsheba bathing on her rooftop. One would assume because she thought it was a private safe place. She is the wife of one of David's best generals, Uriah, and he has to have her. So he has her brought to the palace and he does just that. He takes what he wants, what he thinks he deserves, because after all, he's the king, a man of absolute power. Who is going to stop him? So he, as scripture says, lays with her, which is a coward's way of saying he raped her. And as a result of his laying with Bathsheba, she becomes pregnant. So David, to hide his sin, arranges for her husband to be given a dangerous battle assignment that assures he will be killed, and he is. What is ironic in the worst, of, worst kind of way 
is that when David saw Bathsheba bathing, she was performing the ritual bathing known as a mikvah, which is the bath a woman is supposed to take by Jewish law to purify herself after her period. So David takes a woman who has literally just made herself pure and makes her an adulteress, the penalty for which is death. Last week's track one reading revealed the result of David's actions. The prophet Nathan comes to him and tells the story of a rich man who stole a lamb from a poor man. It was the poor man's only lamb and he loved it dearly. David judges that the rich man deserves to die for his actions, at which point Nathan shouts, David is the rich man for having taken Bathsheba and for arranging the murder of her husband. But the lesson does not stop there. Nathan then casts down the Lord's judgment upon David. He says, in part, now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house. This passage is often called the punishment of David, but it's not really David who truly suffers. Though this morning's reading and David's famous lament, oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you, oh, Absalom, my son, my son, might lead us to think so. But that is only because the events leading up to this morning's passage have been excised from the Sunday lectionary. And this excision allows us to hear David's lament without having the content that, the content that lurks behind it, what has been kept hidden, kept in the dark. Because the events that lead up to Absalom's death begin with another act of sexual violence, the rape of Tamar, Absalom's sister. She's raped by their half-brother Amnon, who happens to be the crown prince. Amnon's rape of Tamar, Tamar is not a rape of opportunity. It is predatory, it is planned. Amnon lures, or lures her into his room, a place where he has control, where he has power, and that is where he rapes her. Not only does he rape her, but once he is done, the scripture tells us he was seized with a great loathing for her. Indeed, his loathing was even greater than the lust he felt for her. He didn't feel self-loathing about the crime he committed. He felt loathing for his victim. David refuses to punish Amnon because the scripture tells us he loved him. So it is Absalom who takes revenge against him and poisons him. Today's reading tells us of Absalom's death, which occurs after he has rebelled against his father, in part because of his failure to punish Amnon. All of this violence and death, according to Nathan's pro prophecy, are the result of David's own rape of Bathsheba. See, Game of Thrones has nothing on 2 Samuel. But I do not want to make light of the stories of Bathsheba and Tamar's rape. We are talking about powerful men using their power to attack, sexually violate, and then ruin the reputation of these women. In this context, David's famous lament, oh, my son Absalom, not only rings hollow, but is outrageous, since when David heard about Amnon's rape of Tamar, his response was not to punish his son because he loved him. David's grief over the death of Absalom should not be allowed to overshadow the rape of Tamar or David's refusal to punish it. So we must cry out in lament, oh, my daughter Tamar, my daughter, my daughter Tamar, would I had suffered instead of you, O oh, Tamar, my daughter, my sister, my wife, my mother, because this is not a Game of Thrones. As I read the stories of Bathsheba and of Tamar, I realized this is Harvey Weinstein. This is Jeffrey Epstein. This is R. Kelly. This is Dr. Larry Nassar. This is the reason for the Me Too movement. This is the fact that every 68 seconds, another American woman is sexually assaulted. This is the fact that one out of every six American woman, women 
has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. How do we reconcile that one of the foundational stories of our faith involves a king who uses his power to violate a woman, a brother who rapes his half-sister, a father who refuses to seek justice for his daughter, a son who is driven to revenge and rebellion, then the same father's wailing at his son's death while his daughter lives a life that has been destroyed by sexual violence. This morning we heard in Paul's letter to Ephesians, be angry but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not make room for the devil. Thieves must, must give up stealing. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. How do we assure that these words aren't a mockery of the stories of Bathsheba and Tamar? Or of the reality of sexual violence that American women are forced to live with? At the end of last, last week's gospel, we heard Jesus say, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. To which the disciples responded, sir, give us this bread always. And then Jesus said to them, as we heard this morning, I am the bread of life. This bread comes down from heaven. I am the living bread to come down from heaven. Here, every Sunday, we are fed by the bread that came down from heaven. We are strengthened and given the courage to go out into the world to serve God through Christ, to be Christ as Christ would be, to act as Christ would act, to seek to save the world through our witness and testimony. We are the hands, the feet, the eyes, the ears, the body of Christ in the world. It is with our bodies acting as his body that we must move out into the world. Does it sound simplistic to say that all we need is love? If only love were that simple. Love asks us to shine a light where there is darkness. As love asks us to speak up and to speak out against injustice wherever we find it. Love asks us to use our bodies, our hearts, and our minds to make change in the world. Love asks us to risk everything. So we must ask ourselves, how do we dis discover God's presence in the midst of all this violence and suffering? Where do we find God's presence in the, in the midst of painful circumstances in our own lives? Sister Dolores Huffner, a nun in the Order of St. Benedict, wrote this lament. In labor, all creation groans till fear and hatred cease, till human hearts come to believe in Christ alone is peace. In labor, all creation groans till prejudice shall cease, till every race and tribe and tongue in Christ will live in peace. In labor, all creation groans till rape and murder cease, till women walk by night unharmed, and Christ is this world's peace. In labor, all creation groans till false divisions cease, till enemies are reconciled in Christ who is our peace. In the face of violence, suffering, if not us, the disciples and lovers of Jesus, then who will work to cease fear and hatred, prejudice, rape and murder, and false divisions? Paul wrote to the Ephesians, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The world, the nation, our state, our communities are crying out and we, the disciples of Christ, have the power of God's love and grace to change the world if only we will try. So I ask again, where do we discover God's presence in the midst of suffering and violence? And where do we find God's presence in the midst of painful circumstances in our own lives? Because we know God is there. And when we find God, we are called to share God, 
because it is only God who can save us all. Amen. Stand if you're able and let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 4, are found on page 8 of your service booklet. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. In the Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Church of South India, United. And in our diocese, we pray for St. Mary, Gardner, and St. Matthew, Gold Beach. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael Curry, our Bishop Diana Akiyama, and for our clergy, Mike Canon Linda, Father Everett, Deacon Greg, Deacon Tom, and Deacon Roger, and for all bishops and other ministers. Serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. I ask your prayers for those in immediate need of healing, adding to this morning Laura Carpenter, Ralph Perkins, and Marge Hall. Please join me in praying aloud for those who are in immediate need of healing prayer by first name. For Jerry, Joe, Pat. Matt, Chris, Debbie, Keith, Sandy, John and family, Sarah, Benjamin, Rick, Bud, Roger, Jessica, Keith and family, Christine and Ellen Adamowski. Are there others? Karen. Lawson. <coughs> Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. 
We pray for the repose of the soul of the Reverend jo Jonah Ruth Alexander, Marilyn Flanders, Melanie Curtis, and Bob Mathis. Are there others? Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. <clears throat> we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Prayer for our transition. Loving God, our sure foundation, you call us to ministry as the people of St. Gabriel. Incline our hearts to discern your still, small voice. Guide us to pray our new rector into your light. Amen. Now we pray for God's wisdom and guidance for the search committee. Please join me in saying their first names, Joan, Ginger, Polly, Tom, Tim, Ian, and George. Amen. And now birthdays. I am going to change my screen so I can see all the little people on Zoom. There we go. All right. So I have for birthdays, Gary Battles, Trish St. Amand, Aaron Ty. Jim Held, Jim Main, Ethan Josie, Jack Aleskas, Aleskas, please tell me that I did that right, and Bridget Battles. And I see a Battles, but I don't see a Bridget. Is there anyone else who's having a birthday today who is on Zoom or here in the house who I did not name? Yeah, we've got one, got Liam. Liam, Liam, hey Liam, happy birthday. All right, Liam, how old are you today? Uh, 11, I mean, no, 10. 10. It was last, last Sunday. Good age. And oh. Michelle, do you want to tell us how old Bridget's going to be today? Bridget is, we're going to celebrate it next week. She's at camp right now. Okay, so pause on Bridget. Yes. Okay, excellent. And is anyone else whose name I mentioned in on Zoom so we can say hello to them? No. All right. So let's pray for those who are here and those who are not. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I forgot to mention it was Beth Grodem's 58th birthday today, and she was with us at 8 o'clock, so she was able to celebrate with us, which was great. Anniversaries. I see a Linda and Mike. Do I see a Linda and Mike? I see a Linda. <laughs> Are you going to unmute, Linda? If you're talking to me, it's the wrong Linda. No, I'm talking to Linda Utter. All right. I see yeah. her. Yeah, he is here. He is here. He's just hiding. Yeah. He's hiding. Okay. Um, there is a tradition, I know, to ask people how old they are, are and how many years they've been married. So, Linda, would you like to spill the beans? How long have you two been hitched? We'll be married uh, 60 years on Thursday. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So, let us say the prayer for anniversary for Linda and Mike and anyone else who's having an anniversary. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that it, in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace, 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So before we do the peace, as you know, we're in the midst of COVID uncertainty, which is why you're all wearing masks, as are we. Um, we had had a couple weeks where peace was a free-for-all, and we were able to hug and shake hands and do whatever. This week, I ask you to respect the concerns and protocols of the people who are here. So that's a elbow bump, a fist bump, a hug, but please, please make sure that you ask before you jump. Um, as the clergy, I'm gonna do the six feet wave the piece at y'all, um, just because I wanna, I, I see so many people that I don't even wanna take a chance. Um, and I will say now that when I do communion again, I'll be sanitizing my hands. Um, after I, we do the peace, before we all jump up, I would like y'all to look at the screen and wave the sign of peace to the people on Zoom, and people on Zoom, wave the sign of peace back to the people in the sanctuary, because we all are one big family. And now, my dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Awesome. <laughs> I know. Peace, everyone. Peace. <laughs> oh, Saint Gabriel, Saint Gabriel, y'all are just. <laughs> oh, ooh, I got the shaka. Woo, dude. It makes me wish I was in Hawaii. Oh yeah, I can I can throw it to Annie too because she knows it, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, my dear friends. <laughs> I appeal to you, friends, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
people on Zoom one more time. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and foundation of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. You're still muted, Everett. Yeah, okay. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You deliver, uh, delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born in the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world, bringing us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. My dear friends and family in Christ, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You are now invited into a special time of communion as we open our hearts to the abundant grace of Jesus Christ in these times when we cannot be physically present one to another we remember that Christ is always present to us, connecting us one to the other in the mystical body of Christ, which knows no bounds of space or time.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has protected you, and loved you, loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. And may the blessing of God be with you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. everybody on Zoom. <laughs> you can uh, unmute yourselves. And hello, so everybody. Nice to visit you. There we go. Everybody on Zoom, say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hello. Know, say hello. And everybody in the sanctuary, say hello. I'm very good at following instructions. Is it on mute? I can't hear you. <laughs> Kevin's trying to talk to me. I don't understand what he's saying. Uh, let's see. So happy anniversary to Linda and Mike again. Thank you. Many more years. Uh, let's see, Brenton Ellie, I owe you an apology for not being here for the party. I had a cold, um, which of course in this time of COVID, one wants to be sure that it is just a cold. Yeah. Um, it was the same that I had. Well, yeah. all right. It wasn't. So I am sorry to have missed it, but Brent, I was thinking about you and sent up a birthday prayer. So hopefully you felt the power. Well, we thank you for that. We're sorry you missed it. We weren't able to come to church today because our car is in the shop being oh, fixed. No. Oh, no. Yes. I hope that is fixed soon. I have a father. Um, my dear friends, Ron and Jeannie, it is wonderful to see the both of you. I am, was wondering how you were and where you were, and there you are. See, all I have to do is say to the Holy Spirit, where are those two? And voila, <laughs> you show up. <laughs> I'd like to pretend I have that power. 
it's uh it's you know they give it to you in seminary uh good morning annie how are you i'm doing good thanks fantastic uh carol fox i see you there as well how are you my friend yes ellie good, thank you I don't mean ellie I mean it. One in the wheelchair. Around the corner, Gary and Henrietta. Hi, folks. Hi there. Horses and the goose and the dog and all <laughs> it's like Dr. Doolittle at their house. It's great. Uh, powerful sermon. Powerful sermon. How That's are cool. you? How is the UK? What's going on in London or you know, or in England? We don't talk about London. We never go. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how's, how's where you are? Uh, cold, raining. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's cold. Yes. It's typical summer. <laughs> <laughs> but but exactly. we're good. I see. I see. We're, good. we're an entirely different service this morning. Uh, different readings uh, altogether. I think we did the Transfiguration. <laughs> uh, if you were on track two instead of track one. Well, I think we yeah track two. Yeah, and some We're, people, some churches talking, today talking about bread and life and stuff. Yeah, some churches <laughs> today decided to celebrate uh, the feast of the Transfiguration, which yes. fell on Friday. Um, yes. We did not decide to do that. I'm not sure why, um, but yeah. So the readings may have been different. Um, they were. Yeah. Okay. All but, about all about the bread of life. Yes. Okay. That will be. You'll. We'll be. We'll be back on track next week. I promise. Uh, let's see. Uh, Verna, how are you? Just fine, thanks. And it's very nice and bright and sunny in Phoenix. Yay. Yay. <laughs> uh, David, our wonderful pianist. Thank you for the music this morning, as always. Oh my gosh. Um, you, you realize if you ever have any ideas about moving or anything like that, that's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> you're just, you're ours forever, um, or at least until I'm gone, and then I don't know, but uh, no, no, no. you stick around. <laughs> uh, let's see, and Jessica, again, oh my gosh, uh, that was unbelievable that, that yeah, I can't even... <laughs> You do that? Was that your computer magic that put that all together? That was that. That's that acapella app. Yeah, I made that. We made that about I don't know six months ago or something. And I ran from house to house, bringing people, uh, you know, my iPad so that they could, you know, record <laughs> themselves separately. <laughs> it was beautiful. I'll see if that's a lot of work. Um, I'm good. I, I have my son got married. I have a new wonderful daughter-in-law. So congratulations. Yeah, to thank you. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, you may notice in the there's a little square here that says Linda. That Linda is a dear friend of mine. We we came up at St. Bede together. She is in seminary at CDSP. I warned her what a miserable slog that was going to be. And she didn't believe <laughs> me. Now she does. <laughs> now I do. Now I do. <laughs> The whole time I was doing it, I'm like, you don't want to do this. And she's like, oh, I do. I really do. I'm like, okay, you know, you've been warned, whatever. Um, so thank you, Linda, for joining us this morning. Um, You're welcome. Uh, let's see, we got Margo and Mar who is sitting behind you on the couch there? My friend, Leah Yorkston. Hello. Hello. Leah, that's over here oh, too. Someone else beside her. There we go. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> And let's see, last, oh, there's em oh, Emily, there's Emily. Hi, Emily. Hello. Love the tie-dye t-shirt it looks like you're wearing. Very, oh, there's Eric. Eric, hello. And then where, do, there they are. We have Michelle and the wonderful Clara. Hello, Clara. Will she wave? <laughs> Hi, Clara. That was Eric, <laughs> leaving the room. Clara is officially 18 months old. Wow. Wow. Yay, Clara. You're getting old, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. I, I would be without Clara. Well, everyone, the weather report says it's going to be really ah. during the middle of the week. So you will all be in my prayers. Please stay hydrated, stay as cool as possible. Don't go outside and do crazy things. 
Um, yeah, especially I think Wednesday or Thursday was supposed to be horrific. So please take care. Um, have a wonderful week otherwise. And I will look forward to seeing y'all uh, next Sunday or Wednesday, you know, Healing Eucharist, 930. Be there. Aloha. Bye, everyone. Happy. Bye. Okay. Thank you for chatting with us in Zoom. It's very nice to have someone talk with us at the end. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have Bye. a great Bye. week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say Ian? She's not talking yet. That's okay. I would have actually been <laughs> just disappointed if her first word was Ian. There we go. Okay. Stop the recording.